true that none of the people taking the antibiotic in the study had any symptoms. There weren't, you know, sometimes you get diarrhea from taking antibiotics, or sometimes you get, you know, bloating or gassy or you feel kind of nauseous. Sure. There weren't even any of these mild symptoms. Gotcha. Uh, from these subjects. Interesting. So, let's say a day, um, I don't know, after the antibiotics were completed, mm -hmm. what did you start to notice with the bacteria communities? Well, for a few days, things really stayed at this fairly perturbed state. You know, the community shifted rapidly okay. and started to have a composition that said, okay, well, we're recognizing this is a distinct community now. Uh, and it stayed that way for a few days, uh, but by three or four days after the last day the person took antibiotics, it shifted back. By a week after the antibiotics had been completed, communities for most individuals were mostly back to where they started. Wow. Not entirely, but mostly. And so it was a very rapid perturbation and a very rapid response so that after one course of antibiotics, it was mostly the same, but we can still see distinct differences. You know, that there's no, there's no doubt to say, uh, for two of these three subjects, after one course of antibiotics, their gut microbiota had changed. By the time we did the same thing again, six months later, they asked the people to take a second course of the same antibiotic. All three subjects, after they had a, this perturbation, rebounded, they didn't quite get back to where they started. So for all of our subjects, by the time they'd taken a relatively mild acting antibiotic, one that didn't cause any direct symptoms that they noticed, they took that antibiotic twice, their community appeared to be altered for, as far as we can tell, the indefinite future. Wow. And we don't know what the consequences of that are. We, we don't know enough about the roles of all the different players, all these different strains, what exactly they're doing, maybe it doesn't matter at all. Maybe mm -hmm. for every strain that, that is now gone or very low abundance in, a, in one of these people, there's another strain that's increased in abundance that does the same job. Gotcha. Or a job that not done anymore by this strain, maybe there's a combination of two or three other strains that kind of fill in the slack. So maybe it doesn't matter, but maybe it does. There could be some jobs that used to get done by that person's gut microbes that simply are not getting done anymore. Did any of the any of the um, subjects talk about any differences in their quality of life? Did any noticeable changes in no. bowel movements, um, constipation, awake at night, headaches, sleepy? Not a thing. And Nothing at all? Yeah. Interesting. And part of why we chose ciprofloxacin is because it tends to have a fairly mild profile of, of mild side effects because I mean it's very rare but you can't have quite serious side effects of ciprofloxacin or any antibiotic okay uh, we're talking you know the one in hundred thousand and one in a million type things sure we're not talking about that but for the things that are, are much more common you know a few percent of people on cipro will have diarrhea or nausea or things like that they're not serious side effects they usually go away as soon as the person stops taking the drug we didn't even see those mild things. So wow. the patients really said, no, it didn't matter at all. While their gut communities had this big perturbation. Gotcha. And we're, we've got a pretty good idea that for some of the broadest, most fundamental functions of the gut microbes to degrade this plant fiber that goes into the large intestine, um, those functions almost certainly continued uninterrupted. Wow. If, if there had been a problem, if those functions had stopped, that's when we would have seen the diarrhea. Gotcha. The way people typically get this so-called antibiotic-associated diarrhea is because the plant fiber, those polysaccharides, don't get degraded, and the byproducts of that degradation is something our large intestine depends on. So we don't get that. We get diarrhea. You know, we got these loose, bulky stools. Kind of like if you just like ever overdosed on eating, you know, way too much dried fruit in one day. Sure. Um, like apricots. Yeah. Gotcha. Does that have any, this is a random question coming to my head, but does that have anything to do with the subject you're just talking about with if you have diarrhea, and I had this a lot when I was really severe mm -hmm. with the UC, that's green. Yeah. Does that I, have anything to do with what you're talking about, the plant stuff not really getting... I don't, I don't no. know. Okay. I'm not, I'm not sure what that 
gotcha. color is, is due to. Don't it. mean to freak you out there, Les. So <laughs> with the green stuff. Yeah. Um, although, uh, either bile uh, or other, because you know our, our body usually dumps uh, old red blood cells into our large intestine. The brown color. It's gotcha. Typical of, of feces. Is That's yeah. Why is it brown? Red blood cells. Uh, when the when the I've, old red blood cells are no longer needed, and our spleen kind of stores the old ones for a while, and says, "Okay, we can we can get rid of these now," dumps them into the the intestine, and that same hemoglobin, you know, people always think, "Oh, it's blue and it's not oxygenated." Well, it's not quite blue, but it's a little bit bluer, and then it gets brighter red when it's get, it's oxygenated. When it kind of gets completely totally oxygenated, it winds up looking more brownish. Gotcha. So the reason when we go to the bathroom, it's brown, is it's dead red blood cell, or yeah. not needed anymore red blood cells. Yeah, that's that's amazing. That's the origin of, of never knew, of never stuff. knew that. So, how about a just kind of the same thing? If it turns much more black, is there anything about? Well, black. I and I, I'm no authority on this. So yeah. There may be a lot more, yeah, you know, the diagnostic sure. clues that I'm not aware of. But uh, black is oftentimes blood. If it's bleeding high enough up in the digestive tract that there's some breakdown of the product, gotcha. Uh, when the when the fresh blood, not the old red blood cells, when, when there's fresh bleeding into the GI tract, it often can come out as kind of black, tarry substance. Gotcha. Uh, if the bleeding is low enough, you know, it comes out looking like blood. Sure, so I'm sure I, I don't need to I tell know, you. Uh, yeah, I know a lot about that. How about um, I've got some questions about. Yeah about the study and so forth, I want I definitely wanted to ask, and a lot of people also wrote in some questions that I wanted to ask as well. Mm -hmm. Do you um do you want to take a quick break for a minute? Um, yeah, let's let me let me uh, get my cup.